In this video, we are going to go through an example cross-section using Steno's principles to give the relative ages of each of the layers and events present that we can see. So the first tip <clears throat> following Steno's principle of superposition is the oldest rocks, which we're going to start by number one is the oldest event, will be found at the bottom. And I like to work from the bottom up going from oldest to youngest. So even though these rocks are tilted, we see the one that's lowest down is this one that's purple. So that is going to be our first event, which in this case is letter R. We also see in the legend that purple means the rock is metamorphic. And if the entire rock or a series of rocks are metamorphic, we have to write metamorphism as an event after the youngest metamorphic rock. In this case, there's only one metamorphic rock. So following R, we write metamorphism. I'm going to just abbreviate it M-E-T-A for meta. On top of R, we can see a black squiggly line that we also see in a couple of other places on the cross section. Those represent erosion, which does need to be documented because erosion forms unconformities, which of course are missing time. So we need to document that as an event, showing we are cognizant of the fact that we are missing time in our cross section. We will then work up through the next series of events, and you can see we have sedimentary rocks and the sort of cream color, the green, and the tan. Here, the red rock you can see is an intrusive igneous rock and the tick marks that are in red along the sides of the igneous rock are showing us contact metamorphism. Now contact metamorphism is not an event. Very important thing that you are aware of. Contact metamorphism does not count as an event. What it does is it shows you what rocks are older than the igneous rock itself. So because the sedimentary rock below and above the igneous rock both have contact metamorphism, that means the igneous rock is younger. Also we see inclusions, and we can use the principle of inclusions, that which is included, both the green and the yellow, are older than that which includes it, which, are, which is the igneous rock. So there's a rule of thumb in doing geologic cross-sections that before you start injecting igneous bodies, tilting the rocks, because you see up here they're horizontal, here they're at an angle, or putting faults in the rock or folds if they exist in your cross-section, you want to complete the sedimentary sequence. So we want to put the sedimentary rocks in order as our next events, starting first with letter F which is the cream colored one, followed by Q, and then T, and then J. So our next series of events after this erosion is the sedimentary sequence F, Q, T, J. Now we have two things that could happen in either order. We could either have the igneous injection or the tilt because the igneous injection is tilted, it's likely that it happened first, but it could be either order. So I'm going to put the igneous injection first, which is letter D. And then something like a tilt, you have to write in that event. We know L, which is the fault, is younger than the igneous injection because it cuts through it. And the principle of cross-cutting relations, that which cuts the fault, letter L, is younger than that which it cuts through, letter D, the igneous intrusion. So we'll go ahead and write that. You can see that letter L truncates or stops against the erosional surface, so we need to write that erosion event in next. The next two events are very easy to see. We have two sedimentary rocks stacked up on top of each other, so superposition. We're going to list them in order, O followed by B. 
And your youngest event always in the cross sections that we will do in the intro physical geology lab is the current erosional surface, which I'm going to abbreviate as CE for current erosion. That will always be your youngest event when we are looking at cross sections in relative ages for geologic time.